Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Daily Dose of Dat. Hope you're all doing well. In today's episode, we're going to take a deep dive into the March 5th, sorry, March 14th, 2025 tornado outbreak, specifically the long track EF4 tornado that occurred in northern Arkansas and moved into southern Missouri. So this was a really long track tornado, about 119 miles, if, I cor if I'm correct. And uh, it caused three areas of EF4 damage identified by the National Weather Service in Little Rock, Arkansas. Uh, this is just a radar loop I have uh, up here, but we'll get more into the damage analysis uh, starting now. Uh, well, this is a photo of the tornado, I believe, taken in the 56 Arkansas area. I'm not 100% sure if that's true, but this was a photo forwarded to someone. Uh, I guess they, they had a friend that lived in the area, and this is a photo of the guy with the tornado. Quite a unique, eerie photo. I just thought it'd be a good photo to add on to here. So we're going to start off in the 56 area, which is about where it touched down here. Uh, this is where it started to become a significant tornado, or EF2 or greater, and I believe it did one area of EF3 damage to a cabin. So this cabin was in, like, the, I guess the majority, or like the bigger area for the 50, it's a small community. Uh, this cabin here was completely destroyed and like swept off its foundation. As you can see here, it was sitting on a concrete block foundation, uh, pier and beam, I believe. And it was swept away completely. Tree damage is pretty intense, you know. A lot of the bigger branches removed. These are appear to be pines, though. So not not super strong trees, but uh, anywho, the structural damage is just given the how it's swept away and uh, applying the DI is about lo lower EF three. It doesn't appear to be of great construction. I believe they rated this as a mobile home. Uh, I. I would think this is more of a uh, family residence DI, but the wind, the wind speed or rating wouldn't really change much. It would still be in that lower EF3 area. Uh, this is just, yeah. So these are the two photos that it provide on the damage assessment toolkit. It's uh, not really much more to go into it, but definitely a EF3 damage indicator, and that that was uh, as it entered the 56 community. So as it continued northeast, it started to inten uh, not intensify, but continue at EF2 intensity. There, uh, we'll go into satellite imagery later, but this entire area is just downed with trees. Uh, I thought it'd be interesting to include uh, this photo here. So this photo was taken at a weather instrument site that recorded winds of 151 miles per hour. That's e equal to the record of a... Uh, of a uh, wind speed estimated by a weather station from a tornado. 151 miles per hour was also recorded in the El Reno Piedmont EF5 on May 24th, 2011. But there weren't any uh, damage indicators to rate at the station, but surrounding damage indicated high end EF2 uh, damage to trees here with wind speeds around 134 miles per hour. Uh, I thought it'd be, uh, it's an interesting tidbit though. You can see the note here. It was a raw station. The attitude northeast, it didn't. It was probably EF2 to potentially EF3 intensity, just given tree damage in these areas. But uh, as it entered like the community of Larkin and Violet Hill, that's where it started to intensify quite a bit. Three homes in the uh, vicinity of just a few miles, I would assume. It's probably like, I don't know, three miles. I don't know, five miles. Uh, instead of five miles, three homes. Actually, four homes were completely destroyed. This home here couldn't be uh, raided due to it was gated off, but it was completely destroyed. I think there were photos of it on social media. Uh, appeared to be a well-constructed home, too, so it's probably potentially an EF4 DI as well. But uh, let's get into the first home here. So this home here along... Excuse me, turn off the polygons. On well, County Road 102 was completely destroyed. Uh... Swept off its floor diaphragm here. There's tarp over it, but you can see the pieces of debris. I guess we're just placed on top of it again. I'll try to keep the tarp down. Uh, but yeah, home swept off its floor diaphragm, and debris dispersed into the yard. There's some tree damage in the background. Doesn't appear to be particularly intense tree damage, though. Uh, uh, either a truck or a car was thrown into the lake behind the house here. You can see it uh, in this photo as well. 
I don't know. I, I can try to estimate. Oh, let's see here. Storm to the northwest is pro probably sitting somewhere in this vicinity. Thrown. Uh, what do we want to use meters? Oh, yeah. Thrown at least uh, 60 to 70 meters. Um, that technically fits, uh, you know, the paper used for Enderlin's upgrade or assistance with it. Uh, large objects thrown at least 50 meters is technically uh, qualifies for EF5 wins, but uh, I, I don't think this area in particular had EF5 wins, but just technically, and, you know, it's more likely the truck was rolled into the lake, but uh, there's not much evidence to suggest if those either rolled or uh, thrown. But yeah, this, yeah, this home was swept away. Uh, given the connection, the weak connections from the walls to the floor diaphragm, they're usually straight nails versus a home where the studs are directly uh, nailed into the sill plates that are bolted down. Uh, it's just straight nailed here. So it's a weak uh, connection and load path. So high, higher EF3, lower EF4 would be uh, appropriate for a home like this. And they gave it low EF4. That seems appropriate, just given uh, the trying damage and the, the truck thrown. Uh, we'll move on to the next home, though. So, continuing northeast here. Did EF2 to a farmstead along County Road 15. And then, then it did its second area of EF4 damage along County Road 103. So, this home was relatively well constructed. Uh, suffered a similar fate to the last one, so swept off its floor diaphragm. Um... Appears to be much stronger tree damage, though this could have been uh, obviously debris induced. Uh, you can see uh, the, f the header joist here and the bottom plate here, the sill plate is uh, right here. Uh, so, home was completely swept off it. It seems like the debris was dispersed into the tree, so that's probably why the tree's all uh, completely denuded. Uh, you can see uh, anchor bolts here. Uh, the surveyors know they were spaced properly, so that's likely at least six feet or uh, lower. Uh, here's a, a photo of the garage. They know that the winds likely entered the garage, and that's what allowed the home to fill. And the debris was dispersed into the tree, so this way. Uh, some, something like that, maybe. Um... See bolts here. Don't have any nuts or washers. So no, poor connections here, but overall to the structure, I don't think it weakened it too much. Uh, but I mean, given given the home was swept off its uh, floor diaphragm, it also has weak connections from the walls to the bottom plates here on top of the joists. Uh, like I said, a similar fate to the previous home. This would likely be more of a higher EF three, lower EF four damage indicator. Uh, just I think just given you know the tree damage even though it was debris induced likely and uh, the other uh, typical construction factors of the home lower EF4 does seem appropriate as well uh, there's more photos of this residence here you can see the bolts in the garage these were uh, into a poured concrete foundation it appears here uh, it appears separate from the concrete block foundation used for the main home itself uh, a closer look at the concrete block part of the foundation here with the bolts installed. You can see the header joist here with the subflooring torn away. Uh, that's a new home. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, like I said, for the last home, this is also, like, yeah, higher EF3, lower EF4 as well. Around 170 miles per hour, that is what they gave it. Continuing northeast, it, uh... Is this the home? Yeah, this was the other home I mentioned earlier that could not be raided because it was behind the gate. I'm not 100% sure if I'm correct, but I remember seeing photos of this home on social media, I believe. And it appeared to be similar construction to the previous homes. It appears the uh, sill plates were bolted down, but it also was swept off a floor diaphragm, I believe. So weaker connections from the walls to this... Uh, Excuse me, yeah, walls to the bottom plates. So it would, if a rating had to be assigned, I guess, it would probably be either higher EF3 or lower EF4 as well. And then the last home that was rated EF4 was along South Main Street here, or uh, whatever uh, 
road is directly addressed here. Hard to tell. It's at an intersection. Uh, this home... Uh, let's get through the photos here. This home had uh, pretty intense tree damage at it, and uh, a lot of the subflooring and uh, floor diaphragm was swept off as well. About half of it, it appears. Uh, yeah, tr a large hardwood tree uh, completely destroyed and mangled. Uh, pretty intense DI here. Probably, yeah, it's probably uh, indicative of a higher EF3, maybe lower EF4 as well. Uh, you can see the home here. Uh, there's some closer looks here. So you can see the floor die from here that sits on the concrete uh, block foundation and the sill plate here. So these were, this is probably, this looks seems to be an older home. Uh, I mean, the, the previous two could have been older as well, but I don't know the exact uh, dates these were constructed. Uh, these have uh, square nuts. You don't usually see that often, but they're quite rusted. So uh, there's some questioning about... Uh, how the home actually held up in the tornado, based on that. You can see some cracking the sill plate here, uh, and the rusted uh, washer and square nut. Spacing ap appears to be uh, proper though. It looks, it appears to be at least six feet. I can't directly estimate here, but uh, it, like the previous two homes, uh, also appears to be a higher EF3, lower EF4 DI, just based off of degree of damage 10, so swept off foundation technically. Uh, but on, on the lower bound side, given the weak uh, connections to the floor diaphragm and walls, uh, that would estimate to be around 165 miles per hour, but you could bump it up uh, for contextual damage. Uh, they went DOD 9 for all three homes, but uh, I personally would probably go DOD 10, but uh, adjust it down to the lower bound option. I might be wrong about that. I'm still confused whether... Uh, home swept off their floor diaphragms uh, deserve DOD 9 or DOD 10. Uh, hopefully that clarification is made in the up-and-coming revised Enhanced Vegeta scale where the family residence DI is being turned or it's actually being split into a wood frame residences and concrete block stucco residences. Uh, wood frame residences is, uh, you know, most of the homes in the United States and uh, the degrees of damage will be more specific for that uh, kind of stuff. So hoping there will be a degree of damage added or implemented for uh, home swept off their flooring diaphragms because kind of need to be specific about it because uh, home swept off their foundations. I feel like that's typically for concrete slab homes, but, you know, uh, I don't know for sure. Uh, let's see here. Oh, 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 we'll go to a bit of a radar analysis here. So the tornado star near Alco, it made its way up to 56. Uh, pretty intense couple here. I'll get a correlation coefficient up as well. Uh, TDS really started to occur after it hit 56. You can see it uh, start uh, developing here. That's after it went through the community and doing uh, pretty significant tree damage at this point. I think around this point is when they uh, measured the 151 miles per hour gust. So, uh, continuing northeast here, you can see it kind of wobbles a little bit. We'll see that in satellite imagery later. And as it approaches uh, the Violet Hill area here is when it uh, breaches peak intensity. A pretty intense couple here, as you can see, it strengthens quite a bit. You know, the radar coverage isn't great in this area, but can only make with what we have. Uh, yeah, so along, the, I don't know the specific stretch here, but along this stretch from, uh, like, about here to Franklin is when it does uh, EF4 damage. Uh, peak V-Rot on radar, I believe, is at this point. Uh, quite a large couple in Tornado at this point. And then it continues uh, east for a while, and there's not really much notable damage for the remainder of its path as it crosses into Missouri into Paducah's county warning area. Uh, one home in the Raven in the Springs area received a rating of EF3 with winds around 155 miles per hour, but uh, I did not include it in today's video. A uh, couplet, uh, yeah, it's relatively weak here, but that's more or so. I mean, it's a mix of it weakening and poor radar coverage. Uh, originally, this tornado actually only ended in the Cherokee Village area, 
Uh, and they originally had uh, a tornado from Raven and Springs to here as a separate EF3, given that uh, one home destroyed in Raven and Springs. But uh, after further analysis of satellite imagery, I assume uh, they confirmed it was actually all one very long track tornado, 119 miles long. Uh, but yeah, really uh, interesting radar uh, coverage here. Uh, obviously, a lot of the other intense tornadoes up here. This was a really localized intense outbreak. Uh, but yeah, so we'll go. We'll go more into a little bit of satellite imagery here. This is also from uh, Sentinel Two. Uh, so you can see the tornado uh, develop here. This is the Fifty Six community, and you can see the tornado uh, up here. The weak tree damage, and then it kind of curves up right into the 56 community and the log cabin is right here so might might not be in the most direct i don't know it might, might have sustained the worst wind in the area it's kind of hard to tell it's kind of a broad large tornado uh, you can see the really intense tree damage here uh ef2 to ef3 i don't know the specific area where the 151 mile power gust was recorded uh, but it was somewhere in this vicinity uh, you can see it crosses the White River here. You can see it kind of, you can see the wobbling I mentioned earlier. Kind of a, took a dip to the south and then back north and a little south again. Uh, and as it enters, Violet Hill is somewhere in this area, but it reaches EF4 intensity around here. I forgot where specifically, but uh, but yeah, Th this showing area here is where it peaked in intensity. Tree damage does appear to be stronger uh, in the not peak intensity area, but that just might be due to just only hitting trees here. But as it continues east, uh, the tree damage becomes quite diffuse and weak and hard to identify. You see some weak damage here, a little more intense here, and it kind of really dies here. It seems like it's a really broad circulation. Uh, this is where they had trouble originally identifying whether it was one tornado, I suppose, or not. Uh, you can see the tree damage start to pick back up here. Uh, kind of lost it here. I don't know where it's at. I think it's really weakened at this point. It was mainly EF1, uh, EF2 intensity for the re remainder of its path as it crossed into Missouri. So, uh... That's really it for the damage analysis. Uh, it was a really long track, violent tornado. Destroyed three homes at EF4 intensity. Potentially four, given the uh, one home that couldn't be surveyed. But uh, overall, a really impressive tornado. Uh, I th thank you guys all for tuning in to this video. I really appreciate it. Uh, if you have any questions about the tornado or uh, have any suggestions for other videos, please let me know. I'd be happy to do them. Uh, hope you have a good one. Thank you for tuning in.